I wanted to welcome you all here today to First United Church of Christ here in Mount Pleasant. Today, our gospel is going to come from Mark. It comes from chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. They said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us the sin, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But see, Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and the baptism in which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. This shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Whoever would be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life and his ransom. Amen. The Gospel shall be heard. Gracious God, we thank you. We have the time and place to share together as your, your children. Help us to continue to have eyes to see and ears to hear. And you may guide us through this. Now, in today's gospel, uh, we read about the posturing of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. If they sound familiar, they're probably the second, the third, and fourth disciples that were uh, uh, called by Jesus to, uh, to enter into uh, a relationship as a disciple. And they, uh, they have this, this uh, desire to, uh, to, be of a, to be given places of authority and recognition um, at the side of Jesus when he would come into his glory, as it was said in the scriptures, uh, when he is beside God, our Father. Now, this is an ambitious to say the least, a bit selfish, manipulative, maybe. You could perhaps say uh, self-consumed and overconfident. <laughs> but really, uh, not surprising. We may think so when we hear it, being they were chosen by Jesus, and Jesus knows who we are, you know, but he chose them to be disciples. However, their attitude and behavior is sort of a common trait. Even around us today, we have all witnessed uh, those who uh, have risen to places of authority, mainly because they've earned it. Sometimes, though, know, even though they've earned it, uh, it goes sometimes in their heads. Then there, there's those who just sort of smooth their way to power and prestige. You know, there's always someone out there striving to find a way to authority, to find a place of recognition. Many times they can achieve it just by their obsession and uh, perpetual persistence. But what I found interesting about today's gospel was that Jesus did not 
respond harshly to James and John. Uh, if we remember about Peter, when Jesus started to talk about him, you know, about his persecution and his, ex and his execution, his death, Peter said, no, we won't have this. And what happened? Jesus respond very strong, get behind and say it. So you'd almost think that there would be something like that here, because they were definitely sort of out of line ready to be at his right and left hand in the world. But Jesus did not come across that way here. This was a situation for learning, a situation for teaching. Christ here was more subtle, uh, much more subtle. Uh, he was not about condemning them. But he was bringing to light a situation or a, or a mindset that would need to be addressed with James and John and others as well. Because they really are understanding when giving a place of prestige or recognition. They weren't really understanding the breadth and depth of what they were asking. There was also, when we read the scripture, uh, the other disciples heard about it. You know, there was a dissension that came about this. You know, there were some arguments of why, you know, who do these guys think they are? James and John. And the other disciples heard of their attempt at this power play uh, to achieve places of authority and recognition. And how many of us have felt that too in our lives and in our workplaces? This dissension when witnessing a promotion and we feel it by manipulation versus one who had truly deserved or deserved. All of this though, Christ is seen as being useful because this was a, a universal lesson that should be taught. This and also this, in this preparation of getting these disciples ready. To carry on the good works of the gospel once Jesus did ascend back to be with God in his glory. You know, it is a truly a human fault we need to overcome. When given places of power or authority, we tend to use it. We tend to use it maybe a little bit too much for ourselves. We may want to manipulate a little bit because we have that ability. We have that influence. We have that control. Not just in our world, and what we want, but those around us. Then use our appointment. Instead of, I should say, instead of using that appointment because it was a blessing you know, for the good, as it should be in others. We crave to wield the power and prestige over others. And in reality, it should be with great empathy, humility, servitude. We should serve, as Christ points out, those around us who give the positions before you. Now it should be remembered that those given great recognition also are held to and given great scrutiny. And I want to read again the, the ending of the scriptures of uh, the gospel, 40, verses 42 through 45. And Jesus called to them and said to them, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. This shall not be so on you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for many. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to 
serve. And he's our greatest example of his outreach into our lives. To be called to carry on God's work and Christ's work in the world is the greatest of gifts, but carries with it the greatest of responsibility. For folks look to us in our example. They look to us to affirm hope and trust. They look to us to understand who the Savior, Jesus Christ, is. And we can never let our position of, in our faith community, even in the greater community, promote self-absorption or haughty pride. The, the statue of being of a servant, as Christ states here, must be upheld. For it is in servitude and love of our Creator we have been called. We are not here to witness our glory. But we have been called to show the glory and the love that is of God and Jesus Christ. Shall we join together in the time of prayer? Gracious God, as we go about our weeks and our worlds, help us to keep in mind that we are all called to be disciples. May we all understand our place. May we all strive to live as Christ has given us the example. May we know the joy of serving more so than being served. Gracious God, there are those in this community who need your help and healing. We ask your grace to be upon them. People like Mindy Edwards, Ellen Bellier, the Andersons family, Mary, Marie Hirsch, the Shaw family, Mary Beth Brown, Kelly Butler, Kevin Cation, Susan Wiltrop. Devin, Bill Bachman, Denny Harold, Ron Millar, and Lisa Moore. The grace of God, we also raise these names to unite our hearts for your help and for your healing. The grace of God is your best to keep help and protect the rest of your ways. This we ask in Jesus' name and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Relieve us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, power, and glory forever.